Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom 5. In today's video, we're going to be talking about aluminium oxide's amphoteric nature and we are going to talk about the period 3 chlorides. So our objective is going to be having another look at the amphoteric oxides and then we'll do period 3 chlorides later. That's our today's objective. Beginning with aluminium oxide, our question is what are amphoteric oxides? Amphoteric oxides are the oxides which have acidic and basic both properties. So these oxides are the ones that react with acids and bases both. When they react with acids, they behave like a base. And when they react with bases, they behave like acids. Like here, aluminium oxide is reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce aluminium chloride in water. Here, aluminium oxide is behaving like a base because it is neutralizing the hydrochloric acid. When we balance this equation, we get to know that we're going to get two moles of aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride is a salt and obviously our aluminium oxide was behaving like a base here which is, which is like typical of many metal oxides. But when we react aluminium oxide with concentrated sodium hydroxide we get another salt known as sodium aluminate. Sodium aluminate has a chemical formula of NaAlO2. When we balance this equation we get two moles of sodium aluminate for every one mole of aluminium oxide. So sodium aluminate is produced when aluminium oxide behaves like an acid, neutralizing an alkali. Another way of writing the, so the same sodium aluminate is NaAl tetrahydroxide, where aluminium forms a complex ion with hydroxide ions. When this complex ion is dehydrated, which means it loses water, it produces another formula of the same sodium aluminate. So both are technically the same chemical substance, but with different chemical formula. Moving on, we're going to talk about period 3 chlorides. We have the same image of our period 3 over here with the oxidation states. Let's write the chemical formula of their chlorides using the oxidation state. So sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, then we have aluminium chloride, silicon tetrachloride, we have phosphorus 3 chloride and phosphorus 5 chloride depending on the oxidation state of phosphorus and then we have sulfur dichloride. Now moving on, we're going to talk about their bonding we're going to talk about their shapes. We're going to talk about their overall nature. We know the first two are ionic solids. We know aluminium chloride is covalent. We know that silicon, phosphorus and sulfur make chlorides which have simple covalent molecular structures. Let's study it and let's see how the structures are different from each other. Let's write the chemical formula of each one again. Phosphorus 3 chloride, phosphorus 5 chloride. Yes. We know that sodium chloride and magnesium chloride have ionic bonding, so their structure is giant ionic lattice. Aluminium chloride, along with the other ones, is again simple covalent. The first two have giant ionic lattice. When we talk about aluminium chloride, it is much interesting to note that even after making three covalent bonds with three chlorine atoms, aluminium atoms still do not have a complete octet. We can see the lone pairs of the chlorine with a blue pen and now we can see aluminium still needs two electrons to complete the shell. This is where the lone pairs of the chlorine atoms will play their part. Because 
we will have another aluminium trichloride molecule and the chlorine atoms will donate the lone pairs to the aluminium atom. This is how a dative covalent bond is formed and we get Al2Cl6. Moving on when we talk about silicon tetrachloride we have a tetrahedral structure with four chlorine atoms. For phosphorus 3 chloride we have three chlorine atoms around the central phosphorus atom. One lone pair will cause all the atoms to have 107 degree angle and for phosphorus 5 chloride we will have five chlorine atoms across the central phosphorus atom. Silicon tetrachloride has an angle of 109.5 degree because there are four bond pairs. It's a tetrahedral structure. In phosphorus 3 chloride, the angle is 107 degree. The bond is, um, the shape is trigonal pyramidal. And when we talk about the phosphorus 5 chloride, we will have 120 degree and 90 degree. The shape will be known as trigonal by pyramid. We have already talked about these shapes in the playlist of chemical bonding. Now we'll talk about their behavior in water. When sodium chloride dissolves, it dissociates to form sodium positive and chloride negative ions. It's a neutral salt, so the salt dissolves properly and we get a pH 7 solution. When we talk about magnesium chloride, we get magnesium ions and two chloride ions dissolving in water. But the magnesium ions will form a complex with water molecules from the solvent. Magnesium ions will form a complex by receiving lone pairs from the water molecules. We don't have to go into the details of how that happens, but we should know that a complex is formed and one hydrogen ion is released for every magnesium ion. That is why the solution becomes slightly acidic with a pH of almost 6.5. So magnesium chloride is not a neutral salt exactly. When aluminium chloride dissolves, it forms aluminium ions and you will get aqueous aluminium ions here and three chloride ions. Each aluminium ions behave in a similar way to form a complex. It will receive lone pairs from water molecules and it will form a complex ion with a positive charge and you will get hydrogen ions released. The pH in this case is going to be 3 because this complex is formed really quickly. When we talk about silicon tetrachloride, it produces silicon dioxide precipitates. But you might ask, this is silicon tetrahydroxide. Actually what happens is that silicon tetrahydroxide is formed, but it immediately forms white precipitates of silicon dioxide. And you can see HCl is also produced, so you will see white fumes. White fumes for the HCl will be seen an acidic solution will be produced because the HCl also dissolves in water and white precipitates of silicon dioxide will be produced. The pH is going to be 2 in this particular case. When phosphorus trichloride dissolves in water, you get again hydrochloric acid. The fumes of HCl will be produced. Let me recorrect the formula. Yeah. H3PO3. This is also known as phosphoric 3 acid. Why is it called 3? Because the oxidation number of phosphorus is 3 here. You will again see the fumes of HCl here and also with phosphorus 5 chloride with H3PO4. Here the acid is known as phosphoric 5 acid. The pH will again be 2. So this is how the chlorides of the period 3 behave in water. I hope this idea is clear to us. In the next video, we'll be talking more about some past papers. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.